Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations by completing the square. Now, before I even get into that, I'm going to talk about what a quadratic equation is really quickly, just in case you forgot. Quadratic equation would be any, or quadratic function anyway, would be any function in which x squared, or the equivalent, is the largest term. Something like this. You have an x squared, you often have an x term, or the linear equivalent, and then you have a constant term at the end. Graphically speaking, you're talking about a parabola. Be they right side up, or of course upside down. Now when I speak of solutions, graphically speaking, I want to look at the points where they cross the x-axis. Simple enough. That's a quadratic, just in case you forgot. Now there's tons of ways to solve quadratic equations. Quadratic formula is one of them. You can graph. Uh, if you can factor, you can use factoring. Uh, you could just take square roots, which we're going to do in just a second. And, uh, you know, whatever you feel like you need to do to get the answer to quadratic equation, do it. Completing the square is just another one. So if the question says, do it by completing the square, I suggest you probably do that. Now, to get into this, I'm going to do two other types of problems, just to give you some background about what the heck is going on. But hopefully I can keep that relatively short. Fingers crossed. Now, in this question, it says m squared equals 9. So what I'm going to do is just treat this as a standard solving equations question. So in this case, I would draw the line like I always do, if you've seen any of my other stuff. And I need to do the opposite operation of what's shown. Well, what's shown is squaring. So I'm going to take the square root, because that's the opposite of squaring. So the square root of squaring, so basically I had two m's, and I take the square root so it eliminates one of them, so I have m remaining. On the other side of it, the square root of 9 is, of course, 3. But it's not as simple as that. I need to think a little deeper into the idea in order to make sure that I, you know, go the right way with the whole thing. Um, because, because 9, as a square, can be 3 times 3, but it can also be negative 3 times negative 3. Both of those will give me the answer, so I need to adjust by saying, okay, it's plus or minus 3. That's, plus or minus will play a key component as we move forward, so I just wanted to cover that. And the idea that, how simple is that? Just take a square root on both sides. So if I could make a square, you know, it's kind of like a crafter noon. We're going to get together and make some squares. And, and then I just take the square root. So you build it and then destroy it. It's like every game I, uh, that I played when I was a kid. Made something great, destroyed it in seconds. Uh, so in this one, I also wanted to talk about just multiplying a square, like a square binomial. I have x plus 7 squared. Now x plus 7 squared is really x plus 7 times x plus 7, much like m squared is m times m. Now when I go ahead and multiply it out, I end up with x squared plus 7x plus 7x again, and then 7 times 7 is 49. Combining these two, I end up with x squared plus 14x plus 49. The key issue here is what those, that 14x, I should say, what the 14 in front of the x and what the 49 really represent. If I think about it a little bit deeper, I can see that the 14 is really 7 plus 7. Incidentally enough, if it was x minus 7 squared, I would have negative 14 there because it would be negative 7 plus negative 7. Now on the other side of this, this 49, that's 7 times 7. Now when we work with completing the square problem, we're going to do it from the opposite direction. So we're going to start saying things like, okay, if I need to get to this 7 from this 14, then I need to take half of it. So I'm going to do 14 divided by 2. Similarly, if I need to get from this 49 to this 7, I'm probably going to take the square root. And that plays a key role in how things move forward. So let's take that step. Finally, do one. This is one that we can complete, uh, can answer, or find the solution for, by completing the square. Now, if you remember that m squared equals 9, one of the big components of that is that the constant term was by itself. So that's the first thing that you always need to do. So I may even make a note that says the first step, constant term alone. 
can't be trusted. You have to put it all by itself. So I'll go ahead and get rid of minus 72 by adding 72. And that will leave me with b squared minus 14b equals 72. Now, from here, I want to build a square. This is a little bit like build a bear, I guess. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into my second step, which is called the half square. There's the half square. Now the half square, the key issue there, is that I want to, before I talked about the idea that if we took half of this number, we could find out what the square looks like, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to do negative 14 divided by 2, and of course that's going to give me negative 7. And that's going to be a key component soon. Um, also, I need to square it. So I'm going to take negative 7 and square it to give me the 49. Now, what's the value of all this? Well, I want to write it in sort of the uh, my final answer term, like before I don't want to see immediately x minus 2 or x minus 7, I think is what I, x plus 7. I want to see the full out version. So what I need to do is add the half square, add half square to both sides. So I'm going to take this and my next step will be b squared, I was hoping it would change color, b squared minus 14b plus 49. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other, so it's 72 plus 49 on the opposite side. So I'm going to draw my line here. Now, what, where can I go with this? I can make a square now because it is a square. And if I think, okay, well, this minus 7 should be the key point because before I add those together, it gave me negative 14. So I really just created b minus 7 squared. And if you want to, pause the video and check. It will give you b squared minus 14b plus 49. On the other side, I'm going to do 72 plus 49 because I did I added it to one side. I've got to add it to the other. That's just the nature of how things go. So 72 plus 49 gives me 121, which conveniently in this case is a square. So now that I have b minus 7 squared, and now I realize that this square is like maybe the worst thing I've ever drawn in any video. And that's saying something. Now that I have a square on both sides, I'm going to take the square root. Now, 121, be careful, because it could be plus or minus 11. On the other side, you just end up with b minus 7. So where do I go from here with the answers? The last sec, oh, so I guess the third step, or the fourth step, would be to build your square. The fifth would be square root. And the final would be solve. So those are the general steps. Now let's get to the solving part. I've got two parts to solving. I have b minus 7 is equal to positive 11. And then I have b minus 7 is equal to negative 11. Solve here, add 7. So b is equal to 18. And b is equal to negative 4. So those are my two answers. I will say uh, that b is equal to, just to make, like a nice little answer choice here at the end, those two things. So just like that. And I'll check my answer to prove that I'm right. And da 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 I am. They like to use this uh, curvy bracket to show their answer. And that's pretty common, so get used to that too. So let's look at another one. One that's even more complicated than that one. So in this one, it's not hard. It's just a little bit different. Now it already has a little bit of a constant term on the other side, but the number one rule is all the constant terms need to be alone. So I need to get rid of this and do plus 22. And then I do 22, or negative 5 plus 22, which is 17. So I'm working with p squared minus 16p equals 
17. So I need to make my square. I'm going to make my half square over here on the side. I'm going to take negative 16. Doesn't like to change colors today. Negative 16 divided by 2, which is negative 8. And then I need to square it. Negative 8 squared is equal to 64. So I need to take this term, add it to both sides. P squared. minus 16p plus 64. And if I do it to one side, I need to do it to the other, so add 64 over here. 17 and 64 is 81. That'll be good for later. Uh, as far as the other side goes, I need to build my square. I know that this number is what's going to be at the back of my, build it, of my newly built square. I almost said build it. That would have been awful. Built square. p minus 8. Now, from here, take the square root. This is plus or minus 9, and this becomes p minus 8. So I just need to solve my two little end game equations here. p is equal to 17, and on the other side, P is equal to negative 1. So I might use my little curvy brackets and say negative 1 and 17 is my answer. And I'll check it just to make sure. Yep, things looking good. Those are my two solutions. So if I were to graph it, it would cross the x-axis at those points. This is a similar one. I'm not going to solve this one all the way out, but I should say that you'll notice that it has lots of things going on here. But really, the idea is you need to get the constant terms alone. So in this case, you're going to have to do a couple steps before you start solving it. So you'll want to move this 98, so plus 98. So you'll end up with x squared plus 11x equals 96 minus 9x. And then you need to get rid of 9x. So I'm going to do plus 9x. x squared is equal to, or x squared plus is equal to, heck, I'm not in there yet. Plus 20x is equal to 96. From here, you should be able to work it out in standard completing the square format. The only thing tricky about this one was just that it looked different. So I wanted to show you that sometimes they look like that, but I'm not going to go through the process to solve it. Um, this one I am going to go through the process on, plus 28, because I'm feeling, because this 11 is here, that we're going to be making some fractions. So I'm working with, as my main equation, n squared minus 11n is equal to 26. So in this case, we're going to start dealing with some fractions because our next step, of course, since we have the constant term by itself, is our half square. So I'm going to take a negative 11 and divide by 2, and it's going to give me negative 11 over 2. Or you can make it negative 5.5, I guess, if you want. I wouldn't suggest it. I tend to leave things in fractions. And then I need to square negative 11 over 2, which is absolutely maybe the least fun thing you could possibly do, but whatever. It is what it is. So I'll do negative 11 over 2 squared and end up with 121 over 4. The good thing is it's pretty simple to kick it back into the main problem here. So I end up with n squared minus 11n plus 121 over 4 equals 26 plus 121 over 4. So where do you go from here? Well, obviously this is what's going to be as part of our square. So negative, or n, sorry, minus 11 over 2 squared. But what about 121 over 4 plus 26? Well, 26 over uh, times 4 is 104, so you do 104 plus 121, and you get 225 over 4. 
Well, that seems ridiculous. What am I going to do with that? What you're going to do with it is take the square root because that's what's required to happen next. And the nice thing about this fraction, whether it seemed nice in the beginning or not, is that both 225 and 4 are squares. So when you get it, you end up with not, uh, n minus 11 over 2 is equal to 15 over 2. And this is plus or minus. So to solve, go back to the end of all things and deal with n minus 11 over 2 equals 15 over 2 and n minus 11 over 2 equals negative 15 over 2. So this first one, if I add 11 over 2, I end up with 26 over 2, which is 13. On the other side, if I do the addition here, I'll have negative 15 plus 11, which is negative 4 over 2, so n equals negative 2. So my little curvy brackets here at the end would be negative 2 and 13. It's pretty crazy looking, but... In the end of all things, it does get you to the correct answer, so that's a good thing. The order here really didn't matter. Let's see if I have one more, I think I do. Nope, that was it. So um, those are the t that's basic idea of completing the square. Sometimes when you do the square root, you will end up with irrational numbers. Sometimes you'll end up with uh, imaginary numbers. So those are all in play, but the system is still the same. Number one, get your constant terms by themselves. Number two, use the half square. Number three, add the half square that you've just created to both sides. Number four, build your square, which the half from the original part will tell you what to put in there. And then finally take the square root and solve. So that's completing the square and uh, I hope it helped.